Hi guys, we're going to do a lab called Copper and Sulfur. Make sure you have your lab sheets in front of you as you're watching this tutorial. That's why I gave them to you as paper copies. So you should see on the first sheet, it tells you that the objective is to observe the changes that occur when copper and sulfur are heated. You need to make two hypotheses. So take a look at this picture. This picture is pretty much our setup, except that um, in this picture, unfortunately, they're using a different kind of clamp. We have the pegboard clamps, right? So you're going to have a pegboard and a large clamp and a large test tube, and you're going to clamp your large test tube at this very extreme angle, almost flat, and you're going to put the, um, the balloon on the top here to hold in any gas that's created during the heating process, should there be any gas. And you're going to be heating with your alcohol burner down here, and this is kind of in the middle of the experiment. You can see what's happening. So there are two questions here that you need to fill out before you do the, do the lab. Number one, do you think the mass of the substances will be conserved during the heating process? In other words, if we get the mass of this set up before heating and we get it again after heating, do you expect the mass to change? Will it go up? Will it go down? Will it stay the same? Make sure you explain why. That's what a rationale is, right? The second question says, what type of change are you expecting when you heat the substance? And by this I mean, is it going to be a physical change or a chemical change, and why do you think that? Look at the clues that I'm giving you about what you, you, know, you should be expecting here based on looking at this picture. Now, for the materials drawing, you want to draw it like our setup will be, and the only difference being instead of the clamp setup that they have here, you're going to have a pegboard setup with an alcohol burner. It's just a large test tube, large clamp, those two things you can label. You can label your alcohol burner. And in the test tube, you're going to have some copper and some sulfur. Once you've got that all labeled, take a look at the sheets that have the procedures and questions next to them. It's really important in this lab that you wear your goggles and tie back your hair and all that, and that you stand. And you have to be paying attention while you're doing this lab, because there are a couple of dangerous points during it. But before you get to that, you're going to get yourself one gram of copper and two grams of sulfur and then add them to a large test tube. You can use the electronic balances for finding that. Make sure that you tear out the weight of your mass tray, your little mass boat. And after you've added them together to the test tube, you can put a stopper in it and just give it a good shake. You want to make sure that it's well mixed. And then after you get in, it's hard sometimes because the copper's heavier than the sulfur, so you've got to give it a, a little time to get well mixed. After you've done that, um, you can set everything up as instructed. So you're going to put your test tube into your clamp and put it at that extreme angle. You don't need a fire stand for this. You're not going to be heating for very long, so it doesn't require one. After you have it all set up, get the mass of your test tube copper sulfur balloon thing on a triple beam balance. And you'll, you can use a beaker to hold all of that stuff, right? Um, and that beaker is going to be there both before and after, so it really doesn't matter. Um, you don't need to get the mass of the beaker. You don't need to get the mass of the test tube and the balloon. You're just trying to get the mass before and after the entire setup. That way you can tell whether or not the mass went up, down, or stayed the same. The balloon that you're using is there, like I said, to protect against any gases escaping. Um, for two reasons. One is if a gas escapes, obviously, that'll make the mass go down, right? Um, the other reason is that the gases that are produced in this experiment are very, very toxic, and you don't want to breathe them in. It's not that they'll kill you instantly for breathing them in. It's just better if you don't. It's really more of a protection for me because I do this lab year after year after year. So if you breathe in some of these toxic gases, it'll probably, you know, you're young and you're healthy and you're going to be just fine. Um, but if I'm breathing it in constantly year after year after year, I'm really endangering myself. So it's more of a protection for me than for you. But if your gases start to escape for some reason, just let me know. I'll move the whole setup for you to the hood and keep everybody safe. And if you see any leaking gases, try not to breathe them in. So the balloon is there for, for that reason also. Now, after you place everything into your clamp, you angle it away from yourself, you're going to start heating it, and you're looking for a change to happen inside the test tube where you see this glowing light inside the test tube. Usually right before that happens you get this plume of yellow smoke that comes up like this right here. That's usually an indication you're about to ignite inside the test tube. 
and we're keeping it at this extreme angle so that it's easier to see this change inside the test tube because if it was straight up and down, the outside of the test tube would just get covered in black soot and you wouldn't be able to see inside of it. So this way the bottom of the test tube can get nice and black but you can still see inside of it. Once you see that glowing, as soon as you see it, you want to take the heat away. You don't need to heat it anymore, it'll heat itself from that point on. And you want to let the reaction continue without the flame at that point. After the, um, the glow stops, you know that the change is done happening. While that glow is occurring, you know that um, a significant amount of energy is coming out, which should give you a really good indication of what kind of change is happening here. So now, um, you're going to allow that test tube to cool, and then you're going to remass the test tube, the contents, the, it says rubber sheet in the directions, but it's a balloon instead. Um, and instead of a rubber band, we're just using the balloon's actual um, elasticity. So you're going to let it cool because if you don't, you're going to get hot air currents that circulate around your balance and will actually lift your balance. You can't weigh things accurately on a balance when they're hot because of that, because they're always being lifted. So you want to make sure it's nice and cool. So just want to check every five minutes or so with the back of your hand, see if it's cool enough. It, it really shouldn't even be warm. It should be room temperature or as close to it as you can stand to wait for. Now, after it's nice and cool, you can remove the, uh, the balloon. The gas should have um, taken care of itself at that point. And then bring me your test tube and I'll get your slug out for you. Um, over the years, I've learned that students are not as good at this as I am, and they tend to break the test tube. So it's much better if I do it for you, for both of our sakes, because I don't want to lose any test tubes that I don't have to, and I would prefer also that you not cut yourself. So bring me the test tube. I'll get your slug out. Now, while you're waiting, um, you can fill in anything you need to on your data table, and then you can start looking up the properties of copper and sulfur to fill into your data table. And then when you get your slug back, you're going to try and identify it using some of the techniques that I've taught you, some of the characteristic property techniques that I've taught you. You don't want to go as crazy as you had to go with your metal identification. When we did the mystery metal lab, I had you, you know, finding specific heat and all that stuff. Um, while this does contain copper, it is not metallic enough to do a specific heat test or anything like that. Stick to things that are easy to do, easy tests to do. Um, even though I have you in the directions listing six characteristic properties, um, you won't do six characteristic property tests. You'll just do a couple um, and try and get a sense of what it is that you have in there. You can certainly look up on the internet and use Google and find out as much as you can about uh, this particular lab and this particular interaction. There's more than one possible product that you could get depending on how long you heat it and how much oxygen there is in that test tube. So I'm not looking for you to be right because I won't even know if you're right about what um, chemical compounds you get, but I'm interested in what investigations you do. So make sure that you think about it and have reasons for the tests that you run. And if you're unsure, you know, you can always ask me and we can discuss suggestions. When you're done, if you are in period seven, you need to do the cleanup. I apologize, period seven. Everybody else, um, lucky you but we are not gonna be able to leave this lab set up because we got a lot of other stuff that we're gonna be doing. So we need to totally break everything down and put it away. If the test tube uh, doesn't come clean for you, we will discard it, but hopefully it comes clean for you. Okay, so I will see you guys in class.